your fairy meerkat toy reward. Thanks. Meerkat toys are back until June 30th. Get yours when you buy health insurance. Call 133232 or visit compressormarket.com.au. Simples. Want to take your life off hold and do what you want now? You can with a $5,000 to $35,000 personal loan from Direct Money that's up to 3% lower than the big four. That's right, up to 3% lower. So why not get the money you need to do whatever you've been putting off and do it now? Maybe you've been dreaming of a new car, a really awesome holiday, updating a few things around the home, or even consolidating some of your debts. Direct Money can help with a $5,000 to $35,000 personal loan that's up to 3% lower than the big four. It's the freedom to do more. Plus, for a limited time, new customers get a $50 online shopping voucher. So don't put it off any longer. Apply now and our fast approval process means you can have your money by the next business day. Go to directmoney.com.au now. Country roads, city streets, big hills, small spaces. Drive smart, stay safe, hard work, long weekends, connecting, staying connected, rugged, refined, grunt, gadgets, this and that, that and this. Holden, Colorado, best of both. With three years free scheduled servicing and free order across the Colorado range. Visit your local Holden dealer today. The world is full of hidden treasure, just waiting to be discovered. So look a little closer and see what others don't. Join Expedia Plus Rewards today and discover member pricing and more. Bedtime. Good night, Doris. The big banks want to get their hands on your super. And they're putting pressure on our federal politicians to let them in. <laughs> Banks aren't super. Authorised by D. Whiteley for Industry Super Australia, Melbourne. On the next Sky News Real Estate... It's a consequence of high property prices. More and more buyers are shacking up to get on the property ladder. Is real estate changing the face of romance? Plus, warm your winter bones. The new trend in treating yourself steaming soreness in your own home. And we meet an emerging interior design star who's winning accolades for bridging budgets and errors. On the next Sky News Real Estate. Brought to you by Terry Shear. It's gonna be all right. Welcome back to the program. As you take your calls, one 300 30 is the number. Here's what we're watching, though. The ASX 200 managing to push back into positive territory. This is amid gains in the two big sectors, that being materials and financials. They are uh, leading the way there. We're just, as you can see, slipping into positive territory. Looking at some of the gold miners, Resolute Mining is one of the top movers in the session today, up 3.6%. Are those gold stocks continuing to push higher as the precious metal hovers around one-month highs? Now, the Aussie dollar also in focus. Some slight weakness there. It's down two tenths of a percent against the greenback. We've seen building approvals for April beating estimates. So not managing to, I guess, help out the Aussie dollar all that much. But we are seeing this uh, downturn in commodities, the further weakness in uh, iron ore, I guess, still playing into that move there. And this is a bit ahead of a big week of economic data for the Aussie dollar. Now, uh, let's move on and check in on another stock we're watching there today. And that is NIB digging in for a legal fight with the corporate watchdog over claims that it misled customers over its Medigap scheme. Now, the ACCC is taking the health insurer to court, alleging that the company failed to tell members that it would be removing certain eye procedures from the scheme. NIB says it believes it acted lawfully and ethically, and it will strenuously defend its position in court. Let's bring in Lawrence Parker-Brown, who joins us live from Cosec Kadari Securities in our Sydney studio. For more on this, Lawrence, good to see you there this afternoon. What have you made of NIB's response to the ACCC today? 
Well, as you say, it's a, it's a stock that's had a, a very encouraging last six or seven months, really eating into the market share of something like a Medibank. But as you say, this is not very encouraging. This is obviously going to be very draining in terms of time and energy and resource because you're going to have the management team worrying about uh, you know, an important legal case, which uh, you know, it's not very encouraging that also you have this divergence of opinion. Uh, you do have to inform people. Yeah, it looks like the doctors, they might have felt that they, some of this would have been covered uh, with some of the, sort of, uh, the reimbursements that they're expecting. So as you say, it's uh, not very encouraging and already off the back of, you know, over the last two or three weeks, some negative news for NHF. That's the stock code for NIB. Yeah, really negative. And again today, down almost 5%. They're $5.13. Within the health space, though, are there ones that you would prefer to, NI, you know, to NIHF? Well, yeah, we did see it as, as an option. To, it was eating into that market share of something like a Medibank. Uh, if you mm. want to look at insurance, the challenge is that uh, there's always sort of lumpy earnings for some of these uh, firms. And it's interesting when they've got good market share, potentially as a trading opportunity. Within healthcare, there's a, a, a raft of opportunities, as you rightly say. And it is a sector that was badly beaten up last year. So there's been, so far along the year, good value with Ramsey Healthcare when that was sort of sold off aggressively. Right now, Fisher & Paykel is our pick within healthcare. We feel that uh, Fisher & Paykel, alongside ResMed, are sort of close to all-time highs. Uh, Fisher and Pike has now broken that $10, which was previously sort of a, a point of resistance. So we're encouraged to see that, and hopefully it will keep on marching away throughout the, the second half of the year. All right, let's, uh, let's check in on Ingham's. That is ticker code ING. Um, it's up about three-tenths of a percent. It's announced, though, that it's extending a supply agreement with Woolies. Tell us a little bit more about this one. I mean, yeah, not the longest of history on the ASX for Ingham's, but already it's sort of reaching a point where it's close to an all-time high, and this will only further support some potential buying. It's quite impressive, the contracts they hold. They've been working with Woolworths for over 50 years, and I think they were recently saying that they've got sort of 65% of the poultry distribution in Australia, and most of that's tied down to sort of an average of three-year contracts with the major sort of uh, departments, so major supermarkets. So for Ingham's Chicken, this is a business that uh, we're sort of waiting to see it sort of have a little little bit more of a track record in terms of its listing and work out where we like the price action so we can look at technicals but all very encouraging and a company that's you know likely to see some further buying off the back of this news. All right $3.34 there uh, for Ingham's. Let's move to some of the miners. One that we haven't discussed there today is Sandfire SFR. Um, what is it the copper gold miner there they, they've provided the market with an update on their degrusa mine. As you say, it's, uh, it, it was discussed yesterday uh, in terms of viewer co calling in, and mm. it's quite an interesting proposition. They're really tied to that one single mine, and that's something that sort of, in preference, we'd, if you want to be in copper, we'd sort of prefer Oz Minerals. But very encouraging for Samfire that they, they, they initially have this high quality. Now, long term, uh, you know, in five years' time, when you start drilling deeper and it becomes more and more expensive to extract uh, your copper, then it's going to be, you know, increasingly compressing the margins. But right here, right now, copper is an interesting story, particularly in like, like your emerging markets, looking at India and China. So particularly with a weak dollar at the moment, this is all very encouraging. But likewise, we'd sort of have that caveat in there that if you want to have copper exposure, we have a slight preference for Oz Minerals. But uh, an update uh, is quite a lengthy one, sort of 40 pages or so. But on the, on the whole, a stock that's on the march and it's up again today. So as you say, it's materials that's really supporting our, our index at the mm. moment. Um, I might just throw it out to my panel here, David Novak and James Woods. David, as uh, Lawrence was pointing out, it's so dependent on where you see the copper price moving. Um, we were talking about this earlier with Gerard Berg about, you know, the, the supply and demand uh, fundamentals at play there, very much the same as, as iron ore at the moment. What is your view on, on copper and, say, a couple of these stocks? Well, I, I think it certainly looks better than some of the other base metals, and one that I covered before was nickel um, mm. earlier. Um, it, it's certainly on the chart here, it, it tells me that it's getting a lot of support uh, at this, this price level right now, copper. It really needs to break above the, the previous high there, um, which was around, um, you know, 280, um, around that level. So, but it's looking more like consolidating here, and if it can break up and break above 280, then, then that'll be a good level, that'll, that'll be bullish for copper. So mm. at least it's broken its downtrend line, I should say and looking more positive, going sideways at the moment, not trending up. But it's uh, one to watch and it's, it certainly looks like a better chart than, uh, like I said, mm -hmm. some of the other ones, especially nickel. All right. James, a view from you and, and perhaps even the miners' Sandfire or Oz Minerals? Well, yeah, I, I don't really have a view on that one, but just, just talking on Sandfire, you know, I think this is really an interesting one. It's 
not something I would usually trade. I tend to look at things from a trend following perspective. But this, when I look at this chart, it just reminds me of West Farmers so much. We can see that really since 2013, the price has been range bound. So every time we're getting dips towards that $5 mark, we'll find good buying support on decent volume levels coming in and propelling the price higher. And then once we start to get up into $6.50, $7, that's your resistance. And that's where sellers are coming in. Now, this, these, these levels have been tested so many times over the past four years. And each time they're tested from a technical point of view they get stronger and more significant so eventually when we do see a breakout in either direction it's likely to lead to a very strong trending move uh, but at least in the near term with no signs of a breakout you know uh, this is a great swing trading stock if you're looking to buy low and sell high at mm. those levels okay excellent um, just while we're talking of the miners um, back to you Lawrence are there any other miners that you're liking at these levels because we know that Along with the fall in the iron ore price, these miners have, have come under some pressure. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, of Fortescue, which has now got a, a four in, in front of it. Um, are you looking at any other miners for a play in the commodity space? As you say, I mean, uh, iron ore is a fascinating proposition at the moment. We're sort of uh, started the year thinking that eventually we're likely to revert to, I mean, it's, it's folly really to try and predict the exact iron ore price in the future, but we feel that Chinese stimulus, uh, the reforms that are coming through, obviously supported by that Moody's downgrade, we're slightly bearish on iron ore, uh, so we're not sort of piling into a Fortescue. We've always uh, been supportive this year for, for gold, and so NST is an example of a stock that we've done well with this year, and it's a trading opportunity. In terms of miners, uh, we like Oz Minerals, uh, that copper play that all also produces some gold as a sort of offshoot uh, and those are sort of the two that we're getting into the most. BHP is good for diversification as well so those are three that uh, a lot of portfolios will, will have considered already. Uh, not so yeah not so bullish on something like nickel, slightly nervous about the sort of lithium story. It's, it's one that I think uh, lithium's pretty much ubiquitous around the world so Oracobra, Galaxy Resources are trading opportunities but we don't hold them in a model mm -hmm. portfolio. Okay. All right. Now, um, we are still taking questions and, and callers during the session. one 300 35 is the number if you have any questions. We might just get into a, a viewer email here. And the other hot topic that we talk a lot about recently is, um, is the housing market, of course, and Nick Scarly. Uh, we have a donor who's written in asking the panel's views on Nick Scarly. That is ticker code uh, NCK. And it's up again today. It's had quite a phenomenal run. $6.29 sitting out at the moment, up another 3%. Lawrence, I might just get a view from you. On, on Nick Scarly, whether, whether you like it, um, very, I, I suppose, really leveraged to, to the housing boom. As you say, uh, very much leverage. We do like it. Uh, leading into the February reporting season, we sort of felt that JB Hi-Fi and Nick Scarly, some of those more sort of, uh, you know, leverage to that housing play were, were potentially being sold as, uh, as being seen, sorry, as being uh, potentially undervalued. And we got into both. Now, Nick Scarly, we got into less because of its trading volume. So it's a little bit more thinly traded than something like a JB Hi-Fi. Uh, a high quality business. And obviously, the only challenge would be, as you say, eventually, uh, if people are sort of looking to sell houses, they probably don't necessarily want further furniture. Mm. So there is that longer term thematic that we'd be slightly cautious about but in terms of its uh, it, great momentum as you say and it, it's a great performer and it has been for us for a couple of years but we don't get every client into it. Yeah, look, looking at that chart, I mean, it did have a really good run up coming off the boil just, just a little bit there towards uh, the end. Um, David, how does it look from a chart point of view? Um, uh, Nick Scully looks, um, well, I haven't looked at this stock for a while. It's, they're very thinly traded. Yep. Um, look, this has had a phenomenal run since 2012 yeah. up to from $1.40, $1.50 up to $7.50. It's pulled back very sharply here. I, I would suggest just on normal profit taking, especially if somebody bought this stock four years ago, um, you'd certainly be taking some profits. I mean, their, their results, their revenue growth and earnings growth, from what I can see, has just been stunning, which is along with the, the housing market growth, of course. This is what it's geared to, this company. And, um, you know, look, the outlook, they've said that their same sort of store sales, from what I read, uh, is still uh, double-digit growth, and uh, they're expecting 40% uh, earnings growth on the previous year for mm -hmm. this year. So there's nothing negative about the company in terms of what their forecast is, um, and they did give a range of 36 to 37 million, so they must be pretty confident. Yeah. Um, but look, all well, they're expanding their stores. They're opening up a new one in New Zealand as well. Um, geez, I just wish I bought this yeah. stock four years ago. And, Don't we all? And <laughs> so I would say, then they got a speeding ticket, or not a speeding ticket, but a please explain mm. ticket from the ASX recently mm. about the sharp fall and 
they said there was no explanation, so it just must, must be some profit taking. Yep. But it is thinly traded because there's only eight, 81 million mm. shares on issue as so well. So if we see big moves like that, that is something to, to consider. Yeah. Um, I think Adonis must be a, a technical trader because he's saying, look, on the charts, he thinks it looks pretty ordinary. It's below its 20 and 50 day moving averages and uh, sees further downside. How do, you, how do you view it technically, James? Uh, well, look, it is below those short-term moving averages, so I guess you could say, yes, maybe we do have a bearish uh, bias in, in the very short term. I mean, today's bounce is certainly encouraging. We're bouncing off good support around that $6 level. Uh, I think there's probably the, the decent chance, you know, that we do see a further extension of this bounce. So when we look at our momentum indicators, we've got our slow stochastic, we've got our RSI, you know, these are at extremely oversold levels. And as we mentioned earlier, these momentum indicators can remain oversold for extended periods during strong trending moves. The probability, it's around two-thirds probability, is that you do see a bounce because markets tend to mean revert uh, more than they tend to trend. So um, I'd be looking for a bounce from here. Um, the size of the decline is probably a little bit concerning, but just going back to what we're talking about there, the volumes and the thin, li thin liquidity on this stock, you know, uh, on average, you're looking at around $3 million turnover a day, which is, which is pretty low. So it really wouldn't take much. Uh, a couple of people selling, a sell recommendation from a, an advisor or a fund just looking to take some profit to really push that down. So I, I wouldn't say it's overly concerning at the moment, mm -hmm. but um, for me, as the price momentum over the past four years has been fantastic. Overall, you do want to be buying stocks that are moving to new all-time highs from a trend-following perspective. Sure. Uh, certainly gets a lot of uh, media attention that really brings in more buyers as well. So I wouldn't be too concerned just yet. All right, fantastic. Appreciate that. And Adonis, I'm sure that gives you um, some good thoughts there. Technically, $6.30 right now for Nick Scarly. Let's move on because we have a caller who's patiently been waiting on the line there, Richard from Sydney. Uh, Richard, warm welcome to you. What's your question for the panel today? Thank you, Leanne. Uh, look, ju just, just on Origin Energy, uh, fellas, um, I, I just read in the Fin Review today about the Origin's lattice uh, split up. I thought possibly they were going to split the LNG part of the... Um, equation out and just on carbon capture mate i mean look i'm actually down here in jindabyne you know there's, there's thousands and thousands of trees you know i mean photosynthesis carbon in oxygen out i mean it's just a crock i hope don john can paris thanks fellas <laughs> all right richard thank you appreciate the call there um i might just get back to lawrence uh, and, and just get a thought on origin energy we're off about a quarter of a, a percent there a, a view on this stock lawrence we looked at Santos, we looked at Woodside. Uh, at the moment, Woodside is where we're looking in terms of energy as a play, uh, partly because you know, the challenge would be that uh, LNG is going to be quite political, uh, and I think <laughs> Rich is there alluding yeah. to some of the challenges that uh, that's likely to face in terms of regulatory pressure and uh, moving forward. Energy looks like it's pretty range-bound in terms of US shale coming on stream whenever OPEC try and mess around with the price. So overall, Woodside's where we're, we're diverting attention, not origin, but uh, you know, obviously someone that follows the stock quite avidly, so it would be quite intriguing to see what the next few months have in store. Yeah, absolutely. Um, David, a thought on Origin Energy? Uh, look, I would not be buying the stock up here. Um, uh, to me, it's it's had a, a fantastic run since those lows mm. uh, in 2000, Gosh, early 2016. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's dub more than doubled. Um, I haven't seen the earnings more than double, that's for sure. So it's sort of run ahead of itself, in my view. Um, I, I would not be a buyer. I'd be probably more a seller up here. Um, in, in my view, but uh, look, I'm looking at Santos. So I've got to mm -hmm. say, it's been unfavoured. I hated, you know, did not like Santos some time ago. But now that they've structured their balance sheet and, and now they um, look like to have turned the corner, I think Santos actually presents a good opportunity in the sector in that big end of town. Yeah. Okay, fantastic, James. Would you agree? It's sort of run a bit too hard, too fast, potentially for Origin. Uh, yeah, I think it has. Look, it's one we did pick up about two, three months ago, uh, popped up as one of the best performing stocks in the ASX in terms of that price momentum over the past six to 12 months, which is really that space that we look to play around in. Um, it, it sort of dropped off that list, not because it hasn't performed, just other stocks have done better and therefore warranted switching into those stocks. It is, it is quite interesting. It has more than doubled since those 2016 lows, so it's certainly performing very well. Uh, but most, most interestingly, these, these newest highs that we have seen 
uh, over the past month or so haven't actually been confirmed by our momentum indicators yet. So when we, when we tend to see this, you can see a bearish momentum divergence form that just tells us that the strength of the gains is starting to fade. It doesn't mean that the price will reverse. It just means it becomes more susceptible that that buying pressure is fading. And we're actually seeing that on wider levels of volume as well. Um, so I'd be a little bit hesitant here in terms of adding some Exposure. Okay. All right. I think that's the um, consensus call there from the panel, Richard. Uh, maybe a bit hesitant with that uh, that recent run-up, potentially having a look at some of the others, Santos um, or even Woodside. Thank you for the call, though. Uh, Lawrence, we might let you go as well. It's been wonderful having you on as always. Thank you. Always a pleasure, Leanne. Have a great afternoon. Lawrence Parker-Brown there from Cosec Kadara Securities. Now, we are waiting uh, to take you live to uh, the Australian Banking Association CEO, Anna Bly, who's going to be discussing the bank levy legislation. Um, also, after the break, we'll be going live to Hong Kong for a closer check on all the Asian market action. Stick around.